Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. So with the World Juniors going on right now, there's obviously a massive spotlight on international hockey. And with last month, there being the announced World Cup of Hockey happening in 2025 in like 13 months, it's going to happen in February of 2025. It's going to replace the All-Star Weekend. Thank God, I'd rather have a World Cup of Hockey, even if it is just four teams. The Athletic decided to make these projected rosters. They did the United States projection rosters yesterday. They did Canada's today. So I thought we'd first look at the American side because that did come before. I'll probably do the Canadian one tomorrow if you guys like this video. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Projecting the U.S. 2025 hockey roster. How do Matthews, Kachuk, and company stack up for a best on best? So there's these three rosters from Eric. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. Chris Johnston, and then Dom Lechusen, also a tough name to pronounce. Uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, 2026 Olympic participation, probably not happening, but we're going to get this four-team World Cup of Hockey between Finland, uh, Sweden, Canada, United States. So Chris Johnston's lineup. Okay, he's got Jason Robertson, Matthews Keller. I think that's a solid line. I think you need to pair the Kachuk brothers together. That's pretty obvious. I like the Jack Hughes, the speedy guy with the two physical wingers. Uh, Gensel, Eichel, Miller, great third line. The Brinkett Larkin, I think they're kind of a lock to make the team together. If if you if you pick one, you're probably gonna pick both, considering how solid of chemistry they've had. You have that built-in chemistry. Joe Pavelski making the team at goddamn, he'd be like 39, maybe even 40 then. I could see that. I actually uh, at first I was a little bit confused, but I could see that more of a defensive two-way guy. Because that is the thing with making teams like this. You definitely want offensively skilled guys, but for your bottom six, you do got want some guys that can play defense because they're not going to be playing a massive role. Okay. Quinn Hughes, McAvoy, Luke Hughes, second pair. I would probably take, it is a year from now, but I would probably still take Slavin and Warensky over Luke Hughes. Fox, the Truba. I would honestly have Faber over Truba a year from now. Faber can keep this up and he's only 21 years old and he gets better. I could see him because the right defense is a lot shallower than the left defense after McAvoy and Fox. There's not a lot of options. I think the next guy's like Seth Jones that they would have to turn to. I think Brock Faber will be better than Truba in a year from now. Truba is in his like early 30s. Goalies, Connor Hellebuck, Demko. I think those two check, check based on how they're playing right now if they can keep that up. Jake Ottinger making the team. He only has like a 901 right now. Jeremy Sway, Jeremy Swayman's American. That's wild. I assume the other two probably have Swayman. I, I, I think you can't deny Swayman. I mean, last year, I understand if you went out of he played like 60 games, put up a solid 919. But right now, I mean, Swayman's proving that last year was not just a fluke. He's still a fantastic goalie. He has a goddamn like 929 or like he's high 920s. That's pretty interesting. So yeah, I, I, I Tage Thompson's obviously honestly up in the air based on how he's looked this year. Joe Pavelski, Tage Thompson. Brock Faber, don't hate it. Snub, Patrick Kane. Patrick Kane uh, is be doing better than I than I expected, but I think even if he is actually back to like 70 points offensively or point per game, he's probably not one of your top six forwards. He's not going to play a bottom six defensive role. So I think even if Patrick Kane, this comeback, how I don't think it is sustainable what he's doing right now, I'm be honest. But even if it is, I, I don't think you can throw him in a bottom six role. If he was Patrick Kane five years ago, yeah, he makes the team. Brock Besser got snubbed. I can under... Uh, it's tough. How legit do you think this year is? I remember I did a video on him. He had like 83 points the previous four... 83 goals over the last four years in like 260 games. Now all... I don't know where he's the second leading goal scorer in the entire NHL. I can see a year from now. Because if you said before the season, Brock Besser wouldn't be sniffing your Team USA. So I understand not having him on this. John Carlson getting up there in age right now. He probably, yeah, I, I would have him as my, he's a right-handed defenseman. I would have him on the team right now, year from now with a guy like Faber emerging. I'd probably end up going with Faber, but overall, I think a solid team. Oops, shall I? Strength. The strength side is obviously the forward core, the goalies compared to the other, like they might not have the best. Russia obviously is the best goalies, but they're not going to be in the goddamn World Cup of hockey, but they have a goalie advantage. Eric Duatschek. Okay. Clayton Keller. Brock Besser makes his team. It's pretty much the same for the most part. Defense, he didn't go with Brock Faber. He went with John Carlson. Didn't go with Truba. Didn't go with Faber. Wierenski over Hughes. I do agree with that. And then Ottinger as well. I like, don't go wrong. I, I was high on Ottinger, but like at this point, 
It's not like I, I understand Swayman is a, is in a better situation in Boston. I'm not trying to deny that, but I mean Ottinger's not like on some bottom level team produ- like producing a decent results. He's kind of shitting the bed for Dallas this year. Last three in, yeah, I think Luke Hughes will be that fourth defenseman, maybe even a bottom pair guy. Brock Besser gets in. Yeah, again, he says this, and if we did this assignment 12 months ago, he probably doesn't even get an honorable mention. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think it's sustainable. Yeah. Snubs. Johnny Goudreau is not a snub at this point. Get the hell out with that. Patrick Kane. Yeah, I guess considering how he's played right now, he is the greatest American player of all time. He's a snub. I'll, I'll give him his respect, but I still wouldn't have him. Yeah, up front and goal. The U.S. just needs that. Brock Faber has emerged. The U.S. just needs that bottom pair of defense to really step up, especially the right-handed defense. And if Brock Faber is 100% legit, which I think he is at least a very, very good top-pairing defenseman, that's going to be massive because there was talks of it was going to have to be like Seth Jones in like 2020, 2022 when, if they went to the Olympics. It was going to have to be like Seth Jones, which is not good. And then we got Dobbs. Alex Tuck making the team. I don't know about that one. Um, split up Brady Kachuk and Matthew Kachuk. Matthew Boldy, I, I don't hate that. Matthew Boldy, young guy, only going to get better in the next year. Kyle Connor as his fourth foe, or as, as an extra forward. It's interesting. Has Faber, bottom pair, I like that. But Faber and Hughes, that would be a disgusting pair. Young studs. And yet again, Jake Ottinger. Free my, like, respect my boy Jeremy Swayman. Like, he has been better than Demko or Hellebuck right now on a per-game basis. Past two years, at least. This year especially. At least he gives... None of those other guys. They were giving snubs to, like, Johnny Goudreau and uh, fucking Patrick Kane. They didn't give Jeremy Swayman a snub. At least he did. Chris Kreider. I guess Kreider, right now, you can make a serious argument. And a year from now, when he's 33 or 34, there's not going to be as strong of an argument. But overall, which team do I like the most between this? Um, I don't this this one's kind of a, a cook. I don't know. Um, I would probably go. I think I would like Chris Johnson's the best, I'm gonna be honest. No, wait, who who had Hughes not top pair? Yeah, I think this one's probably my favorite. Yeah, this one's my favorite, I think. I like JT Miller on the, on the first JT Miller first line right wing. Imagine telling someone that that would be the case like five years ago. That JT Miller had, had an international competition when he was like a goddamn okay like second liner in the New York Rangers. That's crazy. But overall, it's a disgusting team. Like I, I, I'm, I'm bitching about Jeremy Swayman not making the team over Jake Godinger, who coming into the season was a top ten goalie in the entire league. Like that's that's how great American hockey has 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 came. Again, John Carlson actually in this one. John Carlson, I don't know how he ages, but yeah, this team is still gross. And if a Brock Faber really emerges as an actual like top fifteen defenseman by next year, that is a disgusting defense core. You plug in uh, Brock Faber for Carlson. Good time to be an American hockey fan. So let me know in the comments what do you think about this, these teams. Who was a massive snub? I, I'm shocked Alex Tuck made one of the rosters. He wasn't even playing with Tage Thompson. I can understand if you're going to put them together. But let me know in the comments what do you think about this American roster. Would they be the favorite at a World Cup of Hockey? And I'll be seeing you in the next one. And let me know if you want to see the Canada one.